2010. The products, the people, the place. We bring it all in focus from the 2010 edition of the Farm Progress Show. Coming to you from Boone, Iowa. Welcome to the best of the Farm Progress Show 2010. Well, if you weren't able to get to that show, or maybe you were there but just didn't have the opportunity to get around and see it all, over the next hour, we'll take you there to show you some of the scenes from this colossal event, sometimes known as the World's Fair of Agriculture. There's nothing quite like the Farm Progress Show. We'll introduce you to some of the people who made it possible for that show to take place. You'll also see a wide array of goods and services displayed there. To be sure, there were tractors, big tractors. On the lot occupied by Case IH, there was a lot of iron out there, including this big boy. We talked with Tom Dean, product manager for high horsepower tractors at Case IH. He gave us a tour of this tractor on display. We're having a lot of fun out here. It's the most horsepower on the lot out here at Farm Progress Show, and it's the new Case IH Steiger 600 tractor. We have it in both wheel version and quad track version, but the quad track is always what steals the show for us. It gets all the attention. And today we're selling about 60 to 70 percent of our Steigers on quad track. But the big news for us is really the, the horsepower on the tractor. So, 600. Yes, and really what's driving the the 600 horsepower, it actually grows to 660 peak horsepower. When you get in tough conditions, that power rises for you. But what's driving it is these producers are getting larger and larger, and they're looking for bigger and bigger implements. They want to get more acres done in a day. It's harder and harder to find good hired operators, and so implements like this 26-foot 870 that we have here, and it's a 13-shank tool that really wants all of that 660 peak horsepower. And the producers love it because they're just getting a lot more done in a day's time. As I look back over your shoulder there, I mean, there's a very obvious styling change to begin with. There's a big styling change. We have, we have a Case IH FBT 12.9 liter engine in this tractor. It has a two-stage turbocharger. It gives us some phenomenal boost in this, in this engine. And the hood change is also now a rear opening hood where previously it, it opened up there toward the cab. So it's a nice, easy open hood, but it also is the evolution of our case side styling as well. Ease of servicing for the producer? Absolutely, and that's one of the nice things about that, that front, front opening hood. We've got all the service at ground level as we usually do. The other great thing that they'll like in this new tractor is a lot of operator comfort enhancements in the cab. I was just going to say, it looks like a spacious cab, uh, great visibility all around. It is. It's an industry-leading cab size. These producers are spending more and more hours in the day, up to you know 18 hours a day in, in, in hectic planting times. It's a, it's a huge mobile office for them. We've got a brand new multi-control armrest in there that we brought a whole group of producers into our engineering headquarters in Burr Ridge and, and had them design it for us. So it's been very, very, very well accepted. And we also added cab suspension to this tractor so that they're isolated from all those shocks in the field. And this new Case IH tractor has a new fluid reservoir on it to help accomplish better fuel efficiency in this new cleaner air era. It's called the DEF tank, D-E-F, the diesel exhaust fluid reservoir. It's there, as Leo Bose explained to us, to help accomplish this selective catalytic reduction on this tractor. He explains. For over 100 horsepower tractors, we'll use the Selective Catalytic Reduction, SCR technology. So what that allows us to do is tune that engine so we reduce the particulate matter. So we've got to look at that nitrogen oxide content. So what we use is a second fluid called diesel exhaust fluid. The diesel exhaust fluid is a urea base. It's about 32.5% urea. And we inject that into the exhaust stream after the combustion process. So what that allows us to do is meet compliance, but it really gives us fuel savings. So when you look at the quad track that's behind me, the high fuel rates that they're using, for every gallon of diesel exhaust fluid that we use, we'll save that producer two gallons of diesel fuel. So the producer will add some of the DEF fluid, if you will, as he or she fuels up. Yep, and when you look at fueling, we, we tried to size the tank or the size of the vehicle. So that means about twice that I fill the fuel tank, then I would feel, feel, uh, fill the diesel exhaust fluid. 
about what will the DEF cost? Any idea what a ballpark figure? The, the DEF, that uh, diesel exhaust fluid that we see today is about the same price as diesel fuel. So depending upon bulk, and we'll supply it through a Case IH dealer network, so a two and a half gallon carry tote, all the way up to the bulk fill, 330 gallons. So the price is about in line with diesel fuel. Now these, uh, standards continue to advance over the next few years, right? Advance and, and more stringent standards. So by 2014, leading indus industry engineers will tell us that SCR technology will have to be used. And you're already seeing it in the over-the-road truck market from the standpoint of when you take a look at semi-trucks. Uh, they're using SCR technology as well as uh, the heavy-duty pickup trucks. Uh, say a Dodge chassis cab 4500 series is using SCR technology today moving forward. That's probably what's going to have to be used. Thanks to Leo Bose there for the great explanation of the DEF for the SCR on the Case IH. You can get more information on the Case IH tractors by going to their website, caseih.com. Well, here's something that isn't new. Atrazine has been a valued crop protection chemical for farmers for a long time. And when we visited the Syngenta booth at the Farm Progress Show, Chuck Forsman shared with us the fact that that product is under review once more. The federal review of Atrazine goes on and on and on. It seems like uh, the issues with Atrazine just continue to keep popping up over and over and over again. It's actually gone through three different reviews by the EPA, and we're in the midst of yet another review. Um, this herbicide is vital, it's important, it's critical for corn production in the United States. Uh, it controls a number of weeds. Many of your people that are watching this right now, they're well aware of the value of atrazine and what it means to them. Uh, if you take a look at how many products are offered in the marketplace that include atrazine, it's about 60. So there's 60 different herbicides like Lumax, Lexar, Degree, Degree Extra. These are herbicides that your, uh, your folks are well aware of. Very critical on weed control. And also, they play an important and vital role in helping us manage glyphosate-resistant weeds. Glyphosate resistance remains a concern by all means. Producers need to be carefully managing their that's, tools. That's exactly right, Max. There's uh, 10 glyphosate-resistant weeds in the U.S. today. Uh, Syngenta estimates that there's approximately, uh, approximately 11 million acres that are infested with at least one glyphosate resistant weed. Um, atrazine is an important mode of action. It's an important herbicide that helps us manage that weed. And I might say that uh, I just had a conversation with a dealer up in Minnesota recently, and he said they're starting to see more giant ragweed come into their fields up there, and it just so happens it coincides with a reduction in use of atrazine in Minnesota. So. You know, we need this herbicide, the farmers need it, and uh, it's important for American agriculture. And while here at the Syngenta tent, we talked with Tracy Mater from Syngenta Seeds. Tracy, what's the message you're sharing with the growers here at the show? Well, it's a really exciting time in Syngenta Seeds. Uh, we're showcasing our new launch of AgriSure Viptera, uh, a new innovation we believe for the industry from a traits perspective. Um, it will offer growers multi-pest control for their corn crop this upcoming season. You were talking about it, I know, a year ago here at the show, talking about the kind of protection it would provide, the kind of exposure that growers have to all of those pests. Yeah, absolutely. One of the unique things about AgriSure Viptera is not only is it a new mode of action, but it will be labeled uh, in its trait stack for more insects than any trait stack in the history of corn. What's been the reaction to the producers? It has been a very exciting summer for Syngenta Seeds. Uh, we're executing over 100 individual tours for growers across the Midwest where they can see the technology. You can see it perform against corn earworm, western bean cutworm, black cutworm, and those 14 yield robbing pests. What else do you share with the growers when they ask you questions about AgriSure Viptera? One of the key things that we believe will uh, is a key tool for them moving forward, the fact that it's a new mode of action, it just offers a level of control they haven't seen before. Um, under natural infestations of corn earworm, the yield response has been 14 bushels per acre. And in addition to that, we see improvements in grain quality at harvest as well. I want to come back to that 14. Emphasize that again. Yeah, absolutely. 14 bushels under natural infestations of corn earworm. 
And so as we see a lot of corn earworm flights this growing season, a lot of moth pressure, we know that's going to be a compelling pest for growers moving forward in future growing seasons. One of the things that's really exciting about Syngenta seeds is the number of new genetics hybrids that we're bringing to growers this upcoming growing season. We have 14 new genetic combinations in corn, and that turns into 141 new hybrids and trait combinations for growers to choose from in Garce, Golden Harvest, and NK brand. If a grower wants to get more information about AgriSure Viptera, what's the best way to do it? There's several opportunities. One is agrisuretraits.com. Uh, contact your local NK, Garce, or Golden Harvest reseller or attend an AgriSure Viptera experience event this summer. Tracy Mater there, he's head of product marketing for Syngenta Seeds. You can get more information by going to their website, agrisuretraits.com. Oh, and in regard to that visit earlier with Chuck Forsman relative to atrazine and the need to preserve that valuable crop protection tool, you can go online and sign a petition, producers, in behalf of atrazine. That website is agsense.org, agsense.org. One thing we enjoy so much about the show each year is the opportunity to see old friends again. People like Paul Cabe. We visited with him at his KSI conveyors booth. He told us what he was visiting with farmers about. As always, we always share with them the new and the latest things that are coming uh, out. I know this is a very technical technology world, and it, uh, it's important that they stay abreast and uh, look forward to coming and seeing what's new out there. So. I'm excited to see the enthusiasm that is in the ag industry. Absolutely, it is a good time for producers, isn't it? It is. It's uh, one of the one of the reasons I think is because that's one of our resources this country has, and it's great to see them uh, maybe a little bit of the head ahead of the curve on the recovery of the economy here in the ag industry. Thank goodness with an economy uh, that is hurting right now, at least the ag economy is robust. Exactly, and uh, we're glad to be a part of that. Uh, KSI's uh, found a niche market and it's been uh, a, a good, uh, good part to be a player in that field. You serve the seed industry to be sure with your bulk handling equipment. Actually, that's true. We, we do build conveyors and, and, and our goal was to make a conveyor that handled product uh, we didn't know at the time when we developed that uh, where it would go but to, to handle it gently and safely uh, more efficiently and and uh, as we found out the seed industry really has chosen to support us and we found our niche market in the seed industry handling the seed that goes in the ground every year you talk about gently handling the seed of course that's crucial to the producer, but it is uh, of utmost importance in the seed industry, isn't it? it? It Actually, it's got that way because of the value that this technology in the seed, I mean, the seed value went from uh, $20 a unit to 54 in the soybeans and corn has been probably uh, much greater. So as that value has uh, increased, uh, people, uh, the growers need to take care of it. And, and conveyors and this KSI conveyor especially has has really fit that uh, model. What's the secret of the KSI conveyor? How does it convey so gently? Well, it, it, we've dis we actually developed a belt that folds up in a tube and it has a cleat on it so we can run our belt speeds slower at a steeper incline. And uh, with that, uh, we don't have the, the fracturing and the pinch points and the shear edges that you would get uh, in other conveyors and it for sure in the auger industry, which was something that we saw a need for. Your bulk handling equipment for the seed industry includes control apparatus, uh, the, the full line, I gather. Uh, uh, actually, that's been probably, uh, when we started building conveyors, we thought that's where our niche market was, but we actually got in, because we work close with the seed company, it's going to bulk and save the manual labor of handling boxes and bags and totes, and therefore we've partnered with some bend companies, we've partnered with, partnered with treat, treater companies. With that, we got into the automation and, and we control the whole bulk seed sites so that they have efficiency, uh, one-man operations, accuracy. We can sell seed by the pound or by the unit or by the seed count. Uh, we can control the treaters so we can put on uh, the very minute treatments that those seeds need and, and it's really been kind of a wonderful niche. It's become a precision business then, hasn't it, when you talk about the minute amounts that are required and the seed count. It, it is very precision. You know, you know, precision farming and precision ag, and there's a lot of, lot of labels to that because of the 
actually all the regulations that go into it and the, the importance of making sure that we make the best use of our dollars that we're putting in to that seed and the value of it. Uh, if we don't get a good seed stand, uh, we can get all the rain we want and it doesn't matter, you know, or, or the other things. But the seed is the critical part. As we seed, as we plant that seed, it's, it's important that it's taken care of properly and KSI has really helped bring that into the industry. As I've gotten to know you, I can tell you derive a lot of satisfaction from serving and partnering with producers. You know, that's probably where KSI's been from the beginning is to take care and service the customer to the needs that the customer has. And we have a full staff, service crews, uh, uh, support for our products, inst installation crews, uh, and we're thankful that we can offer jobs in our industry. We've been able to grow and, and been able to pick up a lot of good help in the industry, and we've got wonderful employees, and, and the economy has helped us find those people. But uh, I'd like to see more of us, uh, more companies have the success that small businesses do in America. Thanks, Paul. You can go to their website to get more information on their conveyors and their bulk handling and their automation. KSIConveyors.com is the site. Now, let's go to the field where farmers attending the show had the opportunity to watch equipment actually demonstrated there. They could see things like the Capello corn head. It's being offered exclusively in the United States by Worthington Ag Parts. Capello may be new, but as Mike Witter explained to us, Worthington Ag Parts has been around a while. Worthington Ag Parts started in 1964 and they took parts off a of Massey Harris tractor. That was the first to sale off a used tractor. And the company's grown to, you know, in North America now. We've got 20 locations. We do all makes and models. We do primarily used. We do aftermarket new, remanufactured parts, providing solutions to the farmers all over the United States. Any idea how huge the parts inventory is in total? Um, between the U.S. and Australia, we have 18 million in used inventory, in new, used, and remanufactured inventory. Wait a minute, 18 million? Yes. Is that right? Yes. That's stunning. That, yep. We have uh, a fresh stock of all makes and models. And we try to supplement the aftermarket new because we started with used parts, but you know, certain time the life of the unit wears out, the part's too worn to resell, and then we supplement with an aftermarket new part so we can keep the farmers running at economical prices. Prompt service to the producer has to be crucial, right? Oh, definitely. We ship parts every day anywhere in the U.S. And last year, we actually shipped parts to over 30 countries in the world. And we like to say, if you get, our, get your order in before 3 o'clock, it ships that same day. But what's nice about our guys is they're solutions providers. You know, a farmer usually calls and says, I'm broke. I got this whatchamacallit. We have to define what it is and what they need to get running again. So when you get a Worthington Ag Parts individual on the line, one of your representatives on the line with the producer, they know what the producer's talking about. They do, or they have a parts book and they got it online on their screen and they're breaking that tractor down with them and knowing what they're working on at that moment and what, what side they are in the parts book and they're working him through his solution. It'd be fun to come to your place sometime and uh, take a tour. I bet it's a beehive of activity. Well, I will tell you this, that last month alone, we got 28,000 inbound sales calls toll free in the United States from farmers, dealers, or repair shops. Internet service you provide also? We have a website, worthingtonagparts.com, and we also are launching a new website next week where we've gone out to the producers and we've taken laptops in the field and said, use this, and they went, I don't know how to use your website, and we said, how would you? And we've researched it, redesigned it to make it easy to find and buy parts with Worthington. So the producers themselves helped you design the site? Yes, we did, we went out to farmers. The Capella Cornhead, it's been drawing a crowd here at the show by all means. Give us some of the background on Capella. Capello has been manufacturing grain and corn heads since 1965 in Cuneo, Italy. I was at their plant. They started a chopping system in 85, which is their claim to fame. I was at their plant early in May and toured their production facility. It's incredible. What does this head do for the producer? Why do they want to take a look at it? Th this head is a chopping system that's highly efficient. The, you know, it's all about not losing grain. And this corn head maximizes that, and it leaves like a carpet on the field when they're done. The losses of the head can be substantial, can't they? Yes, yes, they can be. And this is designed, this head was designed for chopping in mine. It wasn't a chopping system that was added later. This head was designed for a chopping system. The people who know corn heads really like what they see in the Capello corn heads. Carl Vandyward has worked with corn heads for some 35 years. We're very impressed with the, the job the corn head is doing. It's a knife style that uh, crimps the stalks, but it feeds the stalks down through the chopper, uh, kind of like a paper shredder. It, it does a really beautiful job of chopping up the stalks, and it, the, the job it does 
Uh, we see a lot of attributes to the architectural design of it, engineering of it. I mean, they've, they've engineered this head to be a chopping head. It's not just a corn head, it's a chopping corn head. With our tougher stalks today, producers demand a lot from the corn head, don't they? Yes, they do. Uh, we, you know, it's, it's just the engineering. The, the machines are so expensive nowadays that we want to don't have any downtime. And Capello offers that in a 12-row folding head, which they don't even have to take off to go down the road. Three minutes cycle time, they can be folded up and go right out the field and get back on the road in the three minutes. No electrical hookups, no hydraulics, not the head cart. They're just ready to go. It's just an amazing machine to watch work. If that left you wanting to know more about the Capello corn head, you can go to the website capellousa.com. Also, please check out the website worthingtonagparts.com. Now, before we show you more of the goods and services displayed at the Farm Progress Show, let's find out a little bit about this colossal event that's been held for almost six decades now. Out there on the showgrounds, we flagged down Dina Morgan, who filled us in on some of the details. The Farm Progress Show is just the place to go for any kind of agricultural product. It's, it's a big shopping mall, per se, for farmers out there to be able to see new equipment, new technology, um, to talk to seed companies. Every portion of the agriculture world is out here, and this is the best place for companies to launch their new products, uh, make new introductions, do a new ad campaign. A lot of those things take place here at the Farm Progress Show. We'll see some big iron on this show. I, you know, I love to go to the tractor booths by all means and look at the big tractors, but when you speak of technology, that can be reflected in many different ways, including C, of course. Absolutely. C, GPS, uh, mapping capabilities. Uh, egg has evolved so much over the last few years that uh, there's really a lot of computer programs that you can use now to help you with your farming and uh, make it better and uh, a better crop in the end. This is also a place where producers come for information. You know, the Iowa State booth, for example, I guess is maybe among the best examples. That's right. So not only do we have all these large displays with the new equipment, new technology, it's also the place to talk with experts like at Iowa State University or the University of Illinois, or um, we have all kinds of marketing seminars going on as well. So there's a lot of different programs, educational programs, that visitors can attend and learn more about agriculture and where it's going within the next next five to ten years. While there are similarities between this site at Boone, Iowa and the one on the outskirts of Decatur, Illinois, there are some significant differences too, aren't there? That's right. Um, here in Iowa, we probably have a little bit more livestock equipment at this show than we do in Illinois. Uh, here we have um, different exhibitors like Iowa State instead of Illinois at uh, uh, Decatur, but otherwise a lot of the companies are the same and uh, we really enjoy having everyone here. Matt Youngman, your colleague at Farm Progress Companies, talks about how it's kind of a, uh, a site under construction, if you will. I think maybe he would say in the works, changing, constantly evolving, perhaps. Constantly evolving might be the best term to use because every time you come here, something's going to be a little bit different than the time before. That's right. In between when uh, we've been here last and when we'll be here again in 2012, we're able to do improvements and you learn more about the show site every year that you're here. Same thing with Decatur. We're able to always improve it and make it better and better as we continue to have these permanent sites. And having that extended contract, knowing that we're going to be someplace for 20 years, it makes it a lot easier to put in that infrastructure and improve prove it because we know we're going to be coming back again and again and again and use that those facilities. Even the drainage here I noticed uh, it was working perfectly during the show. You took in quite a bit of rain but the site handled it. That's right. That is one of the reasons why we went to permanent locations is if we had a big rain like that and we were still in the old days where we rotated to uh, new sites every single year, that probably would have uh, canceled the Farm Progress show for the day. And luckily, because we have such great drainage systems, we were able to get the water off the exhibit field, uh, have nice tiled parking lots and uh, be able to have the show. People come to this show from almost all over America. I mean, just about every state, right? That's right. Last year, I believe we had 46 states that were represented here at the Farm Progress Show. And uh, at least anywhere from uh, 30 to 40 
international uh, countries. So not only do they come from here in the continental United States, but they also come from uh, all over the world. Do you get quite a bit of cooperation from the local community, Dina? Do they really pitch in here locally and the towns around here to make it happen? Absolutely. Uh, the local communities are proud to have us here, and they really like to have that involvement and feel like it's their show uh, the years that we're in their communities, both Decatur and Boone. And Ames helps out a lot uh, with the show when it's in Boone as well. It's The communities are great. We have such great people to work with, and every year when we go to the site, it's like coming back home. Decatur, Illinois next year, huh? That's right, Decatur in 2011. FarmProgressShow.com is a good website to check, especially approaching showtime. That's right. FarmProgressShow.com is the best place for updated information. And then we also, uh, with the social media phase, we have a Facebook and Twitter accounts, too, so people can get more information from those places. You're watching the best of the Farm Progress Show 2010. Highlights of what has been called the World's Fair of Agriculture. The Farm Progress Show, held this year at Boone, Iowa. As we talk with growers here at the Farm Progress Show, many of them were sharing with us their cropping plans, and some were talking about boosting wheat acreage this fall, responding to the signals of the marketplace. Steve Pickle is here with us from SFP. Steve, as we go into this fall period, seeding that wheat crop, what should we be thinking about in terms of stabilizing that fertilizer investment, if you will? You know, a lot of this wheat, uh, a lot of the acres, especially in the Dakotas, never had anything planted or, or that. And uh, we need to make sure that that phosphate doesn't get tied up in the soil. And we've got a great way to do that with a product called a veil. Uh, it keeps that phosphate tie up from happening and, and we're going to put more of the phosphate into the crop and uh, subsequently we get a higher yield with that. So it truly enhances the fertilizer investment that you make there. I mean, otherwise you can lose a significant amount of what you're spending. Well, you know, in the best soils in the world, only 25% of that phosphate that we apply gets into the crop. Uh, we feel by using the avail polymer in that that we're going to be able to increase that to 75 to 90 percent of that phosphate that we apply getting it into the crop. Subsequently, we get better yields and uh, better quality, uh, better growth, and uh, there's just a lot of advantages for uh, using the polymer. You obviously deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis, but that has to be somewhat of an eye-opening revelation to some growers when you tell them how much they can lose. You know, it's fun. I've, I've dug a lot of roots and gone out with a lot of growers in the fields and just taking a look at the differences that they see. You know, we see an earlier, uh, more vigorous growth, especially in winter wheat. That's a big thing. We want to make sure that we get that wheat crop up and get it through the winter. And, and using a veil certainly gives us that opportunity to, to get a, a better early growth in it, get it through the winter better. And then in the, next, in the spring, uh, it's ready to take off. And, and uh, yeah, we've seen some great, great things with that. A lot of Corn Belt growers who are attending the Farm Progress Show may have already been thinking about fall fertilization. Yeah. Seems like our spring planting seasons are so compacted, they're so damp in many years. Uh, we've been wet in, in quite an area of the Corn Belt. They want to try to get some work done ahead of time. That's right. And, and one of the nice things about using uh, the Avail Polymer is that we're able to put that phosphate down in the fall and uh, keep it from getting fixed all the way through that corn season. So, Here at the SFP tent, I noticed also folks are talking about Nutrisphere End with you. You bet. You know, with all the moisture that we've had across the upper Midwest, uh, the Nutrisphere fields are really sticking out. The, it, we're keeping that nitrogen from loss, and uh, so we're seeing a lot of fields that are still green where their neighbors are turning brown because it's running out of uh, nutri uh, the nitrogen and, and other nutrients and uh, our nutrisphere fields are staying nice and green throughout so we're keeping that nitrogen in that root zone where we need it. Really has been noticeable as you go down the road and look at those plants. Yes it is. Right yep. I, I've had some wheat fields in North Dakota where uh, uh, dealers have taken me out and said that field's got nutrisphere on it because it's still green the next one down doesn't and, and they're very easy to pick out so. You've done some side-by-side -side comparisons, and when you look at those plots, when they're actually growing side-by-side, -side, it, it really does it jump It really out sticks out, especially this year. We've had some pretty tough conditions across a lot of the area, and, and it's really showing up 
quite distinctly in both products. You have tested both products, both yes. Avail and Nutrisphere, and over a wide range of the United States and even in other countries, haven't you? Yes, we have. You know, we're we're not just a, a company in the United States. Uh, a couple years ago, we were recognized as the fastest growing company in Kansas City, which is our home base. But uh, we are definitely worldwide. So it's uh, it's an exciting company to work with, and uh, we uh, really encourage people to give us a call and and let us tell the story and, and go from there. For those people who might be inclined to be skeptical, the way Max Armstrong is at times, <laughs> yes. uh, uh, this research that has been done, the testing that has been done, would include some third-party unbiased non-SFP yep. researchers? You bet. You know, the, every grower's management is different, and that's what I like to tell my people when I do meetings. Every grower's management is different, so try, try it on your farm, but leave a test strip because we want to see what the differences is. Uh, you know, a lot of my guy, a lot of the growers that I've worked through the years have used it, seen the advantage, and then after that it's fence row to fence row, but at least leave, leave us a test strip the first year just to see what the difference is so they can see it themselves. You can get all of the details on those products from SFP. That's Avail and Nutrisphere N by going to their website. It's sfp.com. While at the show this year, we heard about a cooperative effort between two crop protection chemical companies. Valent and Monsanto are working together to help farmers in that battle against weeds. Monsanto's Matt Helms shared the story with us. Max, we're excited here for the 2011 crop season. We've teamed up with Valent to offer a new element in our Roundup Rewards program. Growers that purchase Roundup Power Max or Roundup Weather Max and use a recommended residual product in corn, such as Harness Extra, Degree Extra, or Triple Flex, or a residual product in soybeans, such as Valor, Valor XLT, Gangster, or our new Warrant product, are eligible for a dollar to dollar fifty incentive. We're proactively incentivizing growers to look at incorporating residuals and additional modes of action into the Roundup Ready systems. Why are you folks at Monsanto teaming up with Valent now? The reason why we're teaming up with Valent is we really want to promote the increased usage of residual products. And if you're a Midwest farmer, uh, Midwest farmers have by and large been using residuals in the Roundup Ready corn system. But we think there's a great opportunity to control tough weeds, maximize the window of application, and maximize the yield opportunity, especially with Roundup Ready soybeans going forward. So we're excited to offer this incremental incentive, uh, coupled really with a new lower Roundup price as well. We think it's a very attractive opportunity for growers to uh, make that decision. And Jamie Nielsen with Valent USA talked with me about how some broadleaf weeds have become tough to control. We've got some great offerings with residuals in terms of solutions for growers. And really what growers are needing today is, is the products that provide broadleaf control. Um, that's the water hemp out there, the lamb's quarter, the ragweed, the nightshade, and velvet leaf. Those are becoming some really tough, tough weeds to control. And so from a residual standpoint, growers are looking for products that can give them a protection, that light, long protection, keep that crop clean, and then come back in with a roundup application afterwards. It can help producers maximize profits? Absolutely, you know, in, a, in the research that we've done with universities across the Midwest and in the South, we've seen anywhere from a two to three bushel increase just by using a pre. Now that's one of the benefits. As we talked about before, there's more and more tough weeds out there, and even some that are glyphosate resistant, that we've got to do a better job of getting more pre's on these acres. As we get more pre's on these acres, that's going to help us minimize that resistance issue. Dr. Mike Owen with the Agronomy Department at Iowa State University says, yes, indeed, residual weed control products are important. Well, there's a couple of different reasons for that. And the first one is that it'll make growers money. So that's an important reason. Uh, essentially, when we start to look at what has happened in the last uh, 15 years with regard to the incredible adoption of the glyphosate-resistant technologies and the global use of, of glyphosate, the total post program, what we have found, given the incredible ability of glyphosate to kill weeds, uh, growers have gotten a little bit lax and, and knowing that when they find that mythical round to it, that's when they will spray some of their glyphosate and some of the weeds are overly large. And those weeds, while they may be dead, have taken away untold and irreparable damage to the crop by removing yield potential. With the use of a residual product, if carefully determined and chosen and applied appropriately, it will protect that crop yield potential, allow the crop to 
grow forward and then allow the grower to come back with the post treatment that is likely necessary in most of the crop production systems here in the Midwest. Kevin Timmerman has first-hand experience out there in the field at Tipton Liquid Grow, Tipton, Iowa. He sees the need for residual control. It's very important from the standpoint this year, if we didn't have the residuals on, number one, we wouldn't have got back till middle, late June to spray, period. Uh, we promote it every year anyway because the weed pressure going in is costing yields every day. The universities are doing a great job saying how much nutrients are taken out by the weeds. Um, one of the other main things we have is the resistance factor. Uh, the giant ragweed, the water hemp, the lamb's quarter, all getting harder and harder to kill. And 2,4-D goes a long way with the residual, with a Valor XLT. For more information, you can either check out the website, Monsanto.com, or go to Valent.com. Well, you just met Mike Owen there from Iowa State University. Mike was one of the team members who worked the Farm Progress Show coming in from the campus at Ames. Our Kristen Decker stopped by the display of Iowa State University to see what the farmers saw when they went there. Max, a unique exhibit here at the Farm Progress Show is from Iowa State University. It was designed by students of the College of Design with the theme of working together to care for the land. Well, we work with actually students from the College of Design. So these are students that are going to go out and work for architects, designers, and so on. We really worked with them to get across the, the themes that we were trying to educate and inform people on about caring for the land and the water. And that's what farmers do best. But how do we communicate that? And so our College of Design students really understood that uh, and, and helped bring this to life. What, talking about the themes that you wanted to get across, working together to care for the land, a major one. How do farmers, how can they exhibit in good practices to keep that soil quality and the water quality the best that it can be? Well, there's obviously lots of practices, but the key thing gets back to the farmer, him or herself. Uh, as we say, this is something you can't buy in a bag or spray over the top. This is the management of the landowners or the, or the farmers. And so whether it's conservation tillage, the use of perennials in the landscape to control erosion, understanding soils and soil quality, understanding how water moves not only in the landscape, but under the landscape, a, a subsurface flow. So we're talking about all of those things. How can farmers practice great conservation on their farm? Well, the key thing is to understand their land, and they do it better than anybody else, but then also understand how their decisions impact soil movement, soil erosion, water, water quality, recognize that the impact they have on their land may not stop at the edge of their property. It, we talk about downstream impacts and such. And then just understanding what uh, practices have which impact. We're talking about doing, there's some new research that we're displaying here of using perennial grasses in the landscape to control erosion and improve infiltration. We typically used to think about terraces or buffer strips or so on. This is more of a buffer, buffer strip strategically located in particular places that has a huge impact on soil movement. How do the biomass crops like corn, how do they affect the soil quality? Certainly, uh, as we think of per, uh, annual crops like corn and soybeans and our agronomic crops, have uh, differing impacts on soil quality than does some of the perennials, like the miscanthus, the switchgrass, the poplars, and these other energy crops that may, as we unlock the key to uh, cellulosic biofuel, may have a greater role in the future. But what we're finding is some of those energy crops have some very positive impacts as it relates to soil movement, uh, water infiltration, and just simply nutrients, where, where the nitrogen, for example, ends up at the end of the growing season. Soil quality is a key issue for Iowa State University and a key component at their display at the Farm Progress Show. Thank you, Kristen. We appreciate seeing the ISU exhibit there. Well, every year we look forward to going by the Trimble Navigation exhibit because there's always something new, a remarkable display of technology there every year. And we visited with the North American Regional Manager for Trimble Agriculture, Matt Hess, 
who showed us all that was new this year for the farmers attending the Farm Progress Show. The new display that we launched is the CFX 750. It brings us into our entry level market. Uh, the usability of the system uh, enhances quite dramatically. Uh, we have an, it's now a touch screen system. So the expandability of our products is much easier for the growers and, and, and users because um, the simple and the ease of use is what we're after. Um, it also has an integrated GPS system uh, as well as the GLONASS system. So as we've been hearing a lot of the talks with the GPS satellites and, uh, and things going on up in the skies, uh, the future proof and the expandability for GLONASS is pretty important. Uh, so now we get both constellations. So the amount of runtime pretty much goes to 24 hours without having to worry about the GPS. It also offers the ability to uh, go with an RTK radio built into it. Um, or you can run off a of VRS now network using the cell phone modems and, and things like that. The CFX 750 uh, really goes after as well as the connected farm, uh, the wireless trans um, transmissions, and uh, that that brings the whole thing together. Because obviously in the field, if you're the more time you can be doing of something less, and the more time you farm, and the more productivity and efficiency you get with it. So, uh, and it. It allows us to expand in our areas as well. Our field IQ system, which uh, is a more intense uh, spreader, sprayer application, uh, tying into the machines, the, allows us to expand quite rapidly with it. And the display, as I understand it, your new display, you can plug cameras into it, a couple of cameras. That's correct. So we have two video inputs. Uh, so it allows the uh, user to select um, one or two or none. Uh, but it allows them to add basically almost any type of camera uh, and, and monitor different things. And we know that there's many things that people want to monitor. And some of these uh, implements are pretty pretty big, and you can't see you left or right or too far behind you. So you can run some cables and run a camera back there. And there's no more trying to understand or guess what's going on. Um, and combines and grain carts have been a, a, a big hit for, for many, many years. And to monitor the grain coming out of the, of the spout is, is pretty important. The display, I understand it correctly, uh, is, uh, is the kind of thing that should help that producer get into this uh, technology for someone who really hasn't uh, immersed themselves yet. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing that Trimble has really gone after is to listen to the customers and know exactly what uh, we need to put out in the system. Um, because every day, you know, we only touch these things a couple times a year sometimes. And, you know, to retrain all the time isn't the most efficient time of, the, uh, of their use. So we need to uh, make it very easy. And that's one thing we really go after and our expandability of the product. So a uh, grower can start with this display, have the same user functionality on this display as our mainstream display, our FMX display, and work back and forth without having any retraining curves. Field IQ, you can use with a variety of operations, right? Correct. Uh, Trimble is uh, fully immersed into the flow control market. Uh, Field IQ is the Trimble um, uh, flagship, and we will continue to expand with that product. But number one, uh, that the show we have expanded into the sprayers and spreader markets where we can tie directly into the OEM sprayers and we can use the switches on the machine. Uh, we can control up to such as 48 rows or even 48 nozzles. So we have a, a liquid, uh, liquid block system that we can actually control down to the nozzle if someone cho chooses to. Use the Rawson controller on the verb on the pump so we can slow the pump down as we start shutting off nozzles. And so now if a sprayer has um, three sections and they want to expand into a much more precise precision, uh, this is a system that will allow them to do it. So they can start with that display and expand from that. Um, and the entry level of the system, of the pricing and, and, and all the works, allows that grower to get into that real, real quick. Matt has a lot more information to share with growers. If you just visit his website, you can go to trimble.com slash agriculture. Well, let's shift gears now and talk about sprayers. Hagee, more than six decades ago, had the very first self-propelled sprayer, and they continue to work hard to make sure they serve the needs of today's farmers and applicators. Alan Hagee was there at the booth. He was excited about the STX-10. I asked him to tell me about it. We didn't want to replace any machines. We wanted to fill in a segment of the market we felt was missing. A uh, thousand gallon machine, uh, mid-sized producer target, you know, not, we're going to try to keep it out of the commercial environment, and it's not really in there for the smaller producers. It's in that mid-size, kind of the growing size of producers. Um, the machine is, you know, some of the targets were to make it uh, as lightweight as possible, 
and keep the cost down. We really want to, you know, our, our, our goal in life is to add value, significant value to our producer, you know, to the, our customers, which are the producers and custom applicators of the world. Um, we want to add significant value to their operations. We know we don't build motorcycles, we don't build uh, motor homes. We provide to the profitability of our customers, and we take that very seriously. You mentioned lightweight. Why is lightweight important? Address that. Yeah, you think about these machines, and they aren't always, the, the conditions are not always going to be ideal. You think about it, the machine has to go out no matter what. When it's time to spray a crop, you know, the, the, the mother nature is not always going to cooperate. You know, this, this year, for example, I mean, you think of some of these some of the uh, conditions that our customers were faced with, with, uh, you know, I've heard of uh, areas of the country they got almost 30 inches of rain in a, in a, in a month's time. You know, and that was all during the time of the year when machines needed to be out there spraying. And why it's, you know, you look at a machine like that, uh, the machine is perfectly balanced, which means, you know, the, each axle is, is the, it's the same weight on each axle. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether the machine is full of product or it's empty. Um, you look at some of our competitive machines, and they aren't that way. You know, you tend to see the, the tanks are offset to one direction or the other. Um, you're only as good as your uh, worst axle, and we understand that it needs to be, you know, we need to have balance, and it's, it's very critical that that happens. You're the third generation of the Hagee family involved in the, the company business. It must be a, a real mission of yours to deliver a quality product. Yes, it is. I, I take the legacy seriously. You know, my grand, you look back 63 years ago, my grandfather started the company, and he took delivering value to the end user very seriously. And uh, we want to be, you know, in being the industry innovator originally, you know, we, we look back 63 years ago, we were the first to produce a self-propelled sprayer in the world. And we take that seriously. And Hagee's Jim Williams said the engineers at his company sure did listen to producers when they designed the STX-10. Operator comfort has always been extremely important for Hagee Manufacturing. Uh, one of the th key things that we have uh, that's kind of uh, mostly unique in the industry is our upfront boom. Uh, a lot of people don't take that into account that when you're operating a rear boom machine, you're doing a lot of head turning and quite a, quite a, a long distance to turn. With our boom out in front of our machine, uh, minimal head movement you can see from boom tip to boom tip without any obstructions. Be able to see if you've got a, a nozzle plugged or just when you're doing along the headlands or, or the end of a field, you can see where that boom tip is uh, to make sure you're getting that last row. Um, this machine also has a completely new uh, cab design. Uh, we've gone from the ground up on this. Uh, air ride seat for the operator, seven, seat, uh, seven uh, adjustable mo motions on that seat. A brand new ergonomically designed hydrostatic handle uh, gives all the controls for the operator in that one hand and a, a comfortable uh, feel for that hand in that operating mode. Um, when you, also, when you get down to transporting the machine, uh, the new boom design with its uh, upper routing channel cleans the boom up so well uh, when it's folded in for transport, you don't have all the solution lines and hydraulic lines to look through anymore. You can see that what's coming down a road uh, as you're transporting from field to field extremely easily, so you don't have to, to worry about creeping into an intersection. There is much more, I assure you, to the Hagee story, and you can get it at their website, including a neat historical depiction of their various sprayers over the years. Just go to Hagee.com. That's Hagee.com. Well, at the Dow AgroSciences exhibit, growers came through by the thousands to see what that company is offering producers now. Ben Kaler was there to greet many of those producers. From a seeds and traits side of the business, probably our newest product that we've showed them is SmartStax Refuge Advanced. It's our new refuge in a bag product that growers will be able to plant. Um, it provides a lot of convenience, also ensures grower compliance for stewardship regulations, and provides the best value for a grower. The stewardship regulations are obviously there for a reason, but compliance has been sort of onerous in the past, hasn't it? A kind of a burden for the producer. Yeah, when we talk to growers here, they uh, would like something that's more convenient for them to uh, use, and, and they understand the value of the technology, and I think they want to be in compliance. We're just trying to help them uh, with a new product that will make it a lot easier for them to do that. What else is coming down the road that growers might be uh, excited about? Well, uh, not only in our do we have new technology, but uh, another, I'll say, new introduction from Dow Agri-Sciences is new genetics. Uh, certainly, you got to have the right genetics for any grower, both in corn and soybeans, to have a good product in the field. So we think we have one of the best genetics programs in the industry, and now we can protect it with the best set of traits with SmartStax Refuge Advanced. 
This has not been exactly an optimal year for producers growing crops in this part of the world here in central Iowa, has it? I understand your, your plots out here at the show kind of underwent some tests too. Yeah, it's been a real challenge. Um, uh, the people in charge of our plots have done a great job of keeping the plants growing and alive. I mean, it's went through incredible amounts of rainfall. It's uh, battled hail. Just last night we had nearly six inches of rainfall here, and we're still walking thousands of growers through our tour and uh, showing off the new technologies. But it very much replicates what growers uh, have encountered in this region too. Yeah, absolutely. They see uh, a lot of the same challenges year in and year out. Uh, that's one of the challenges of growing or being a farmer is uh, the unpredictability of the weather. And at the Farm Progress Show, we also learned about the Dow AgroSciences crop chemical business from Rajan Gajaria. We've got good products for nitrogen management. Uh, we've got a product called Enserve, which has been time tested in the Midwest for 30 plus years. Been around a long time. Long time, and it still works, and it still works great. Um, Instinct, that's our new technology for nitrogen management for the UAN segment, which we have introduced, and we are showcasing that in here. The other thing from a chemistry standpoint, which we are talking about, is our, our foundation chemistry is a product called Sure Start. Uh, tough to control weeds, resistant weeds, these are things which are entering back into our vocabulary when it comes to weed management, and Dove AgroSciences has been a strong proponent for a long time of a balance between chemistry and biology. And uh, Sure Start, I'm proud to say, is uh, the strongest brand there is when it comes to managing the tough to control and resistant weeds. So we've got Sure Start on the display here. Sonic, which is a product which we have for soybeans, uh, again, hitting that tough to control and resistant segment is another key product we have here. Rajan, you must really have at Dow AgroSciences a commitment to research. I mean, it's, it's got to be more than just lip service, I would think. Research is important to you, isn't it? Research is, and uh, there is a... The commitment to research comes in three ways. The first and foremost is the obvious one, which is dollars. I think uh, that's the easy part, saying, OK, hey, you want to invest, but more investment does not always mean better results. And uh, that's the other thing which I wanted to bring to the table is that not only do we have a strong pipeline, but with all the money which we are spending in research, which is a lot, our strike rate of getting people committed to delivering solutions for the growers is huge. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times we are stopped in the hallways from our R&D friends to say, hey, did that technology hit the marketplace? How is that doing? Is it working? So that passion for agriculture, it translates below the investment down to people actually wanting to make a difference. And the third thing about R&D, which I wanted to mention, is a balance. Uh, we don't have all our eggs in one basket. Um, we do invest in the technology side for the chemistry, and we continue to work on the biology. Oh, yes, there is much more that you need to learn from the folks at Dow AgroSciences. In addition to what Rajan told us, you can go to the website www.dowagro.com. Well, as you went around the exhibit field of the Farm Progress Show, it was hard to miss the sprawling display of New Holland. Their farm equipment was there along with the chainsaw artisans who were carving their artwork. And not far away, the superb hay and forage lineup of New Holland, Gary Wycheck, was there with one of those machines. This is the new Durabine head hooked to our speed rower. And uh, this new head comes in two sizes, a 19 foot and a 16 foot. And these heads feature extra clean cutting, durability for the commercial operator and a high end user that really expects uh, maximum capacity and productivity day in and day out. And uh, the crop flow and efficiency is, is one of the features as well. What makes it work so well, this header? I'll tell you what. The uh, new Momax 2 disc cutter bar is a key for cutting clean and flowing the crop back, as well as the auger. We have a crop flow auger in here that distributes the crop, that grabs the crop from the cutter bar and distributes it into the conditioning system. So it makes it cut cleaner because it moves it away from the bar and it distributes it evenly to the conditioning system so the hay dries faster. Really? It does improve the drying? Yes, so it will uh, handle a good throughput. I mean, you can put quite a load through there. Yes. I mean, this, this head here, like this Durabine 419, could cut up to 25 acres an hour for a customer. So the bigger producers really appreciate oh, yes. the kind of work they can get done with it. Tested in the field? Oh, yes, absolutely. 
Absolutely, tested in uh, different markets around North America. We did some of the testing to really test its durability. You know, it's called a Durabine because it's extra durable. It's a commercial grade head. We did a lot of testing in California and uh, those markets with heavy winter forage, uh, up to 22 tons an acre, big crop. And of course, the normal alfalfa crops around North America, uh, you know, from, with center pivot irrigation, so there's a high yield to uh, contend with. And we've passed all the tests and we're releasing it to the world. And finally, among everything else New Holland was displaying at the Farm Progress Show, there was this view of the future, the tractor of tomorrow, perhaps. Paul Trella there with New Holland told us about the hydrogen tractor. It's a concept vehicle that we developed several years ago, and it really is just a, a uh, understanding of, is there an alternative power source that could be used in place of a traditional diesel engine? Now, we know that there's hydrogen fuel cell technology. We know it works. But when it comes to agriculture, there's a whole other concept that this tractor really plugs into. And it has to do with an ener energy independent farm. Is there an opportunity to have American agriculture become more energy independent and producing their own inputs and managing those inputs to better their bottom line? And that's really where the NH2 fits in. It's in that concept. What's your gut feeling? I mean, looking at the history of this industry, how fast we're moving today, what's your feel for when there might be a hydrogen tractor in the field? My, my, my original gut says, oh, it's 30 years out. But knowing how technology changes, it's probably closer to 10 years out to where we'll see it. I have no doubt that we'll see hydrogen as a fuel available commercially to power equipment engines for the future. We know they're running in buses and cars in the cities. Uh, it's, it's no, there's no emissions out of a hydrogen fuel cell. So it's completely, you know, no spewing chemicals in the air. It's very, very quiet. So you cut down on noise pollution. So it has a lot of advantages. There is some downside to handling the fuel safely, which has to be dealt with. But for the future, I believe it does have a place in, in agriculture. So it certainly seems its environmental footprint would be diminished once it's fully developed out there. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, and again, tying back into the whole concept of a farm where you have access to wind, to solar, photovoltaics, methane generators, where farmers today are trying to generate some of their own electricity to feed the house, the milking parlor, the farmstead. And you think about taking that to the next step. If you don't use that electricity, you either have to store it in a traditional battery system, which is cumbersome and costly, or you could sell it back, I suppose, or you lose it. Creating a hydrogen gas is a way of potentially storing the energy in that unused energy in electricity that can be then put back into a machine like this for field use to create your crops. And it kind of is a circle of life, if you will. It, what you harvest goes back into the ground and it keeps replenishing itself. If you want to get the full rundown on the New Holland equipment being offered to producers, just go to their website. It's IamFarmRaised.com. Let me repeat that for you. www.IamFarmRaised.com. Well, let's recap for you now the various websites I gave you over the past hour to lead you back to those folks who were there as a part of the Farm Progress Show. First of all, there was that exhibit of Case IH. To learn more about their big tractor and other products, go to CaseIH.com. At Syngenta, we shared with you the site AgriSureTraits.com and also the site for the Atrazine Support Petition, AgSense.org. After talking with our friend Paul Cabe, we gave you his company website, KSIConveyors.com. From our story on the Capello Cornhead, we gave you CapelloUSA.com. And invited you to also check out WorthingtonAgParts.com. Our friends at SFP want you to know more about Avail and Nutrisphere N, and you can find that at SFP.com. With Monsanto and Valent teaming up, you can pursue information at either Monsanto.com or at Valent.com. The people of Tremble Navigation would love to show you what's new at Tremble.com slash agriculture. Hagee's new sprayers can be seen at Hagee.com. To follow up on what many growers saw at the Dow AgroSciences tent, visit DowAgro.com. And finally, the products of New Holland are fully displayed at imfarmraised.com. 
Well, thank you for spending time with us. It's been a pleasure to give you a recap of Farm Progress Show 2010. Till next time, I'm Max Armstrong. So long, everyone. Watching the best of the Farm Progress Show 2010. The best of the Farm Progress Show has come to you from the biennial permanent site at Boone, Iowa. This program has been produced by High Yield Productions and is a presentation of Farm Progress Broadcast, a division of Farm Progress Company. Thanks for tuning in to RFD TV, Rural America's most important network.